Today we're taking a look at the 58mm f0.95 knot lens. Now you may be asking yourself why, considering this lens came out in October 2019, have we not made a video about it yet? Well, you know why? Because it is currently the rarest Nikon Z lens around. Apparently, according to internet detectives, there are less than 1,000 of those being produced. We've managed to get a hold of one thanks to Nikon for loaning us this one. We're going to test it out and show you our results and give you our thoughts. The concept behind the knot lens, as some of you might have realized, is the historical 58mm f1.2 knot nickel that was originally produced between 1977 and 1997, but it is not the same design for obvious reasons as the F-mount lens. The 58mm f0.95 lens much like its predecessor, it is designed to shoot in low light and to render brilliant points of light in dark situations perfectly. The original was an aspherical lens with reduced coma and flare. This Noct is conceptually kind of the same. However, it's a very, very different lens in construction. For Nikon, it's more of a proof of concept lens and with that comes a very hefty price tag. Let's talk about lens specifications a little bit. So it's got 17 elements and 10 groups, including four ED elements, three aspherical elements, also including armio code elements, as well as nanocrystal. Now, front of the lens also has a fluorine code. So 17 elements and 10 groups, normally reserved for a zoom lens, generally. So this is all crammed in one prime lens, which is very interesting. Now, speaking of diaphragm blades, this one's got 11 for this beautiful battery bokeh. Compared to, let's say, 58.1.4G, which has got 9, and also 58 AIS lens also has got 9. So this one is definitely an improvement. Weight-wise, however, is 2 kilograms, so definitely heavier than any lenses I previously mentioned. It's got manual focus compared to autofocus on the F-mount lens. However, look at this. There's a lot of glass in there, and I assume that it would be quite difficult for the F-mount to drive it. Now, let's talk at closest focusing distance. It's half a meter and the throw is quite long. So get me from the closed focusing distance to infinity, it will take a 360 degree turn, which is, I guess, not great for street photography, but this lens is not designed for that. One of the proposed use cases for this lens by Nikon is actually for video work. So we've mounted the 58 millimeter onto our filming Z6 so that you can see how shallow the depth of field is and how it would work for video. I'm currently trying not to move too much because obviously it's a manual focus lens, the camera is not going to track focus. The wall behind me is about 1.2 meters away, so it gives you an idea of how you can obliterate the background shooting video if you were to use a lens like this. Not saying it's the most practical lens, but the imagery certainly is pretty. Speaking of another use case scenario, as a part of the video, you can use it for astrophotography because you can open the lens quite wide to 0.95 and focus in infinity. So I'm sure you can get some nice star trails on your shots. Uh, Nikon also has a video footage of the time lapses taken at night. So have a look at that as well. But my preferred use case scenario for this lens would be portraiture, of course. And 0.95 gives you a really, really beautiful and shallow adapter field. The 3D rendering is fantastic. The problem, obviously, is getting it right. But at 0.95, if you can nail it, the image looks beautiful. And that's something that is very difficult to get on the portrait lenses really wide open. That's why we always say stop it down to at least one or two stops. This one is pin sharp at 0.95, as long as you can nail it. Stop down to 1.2 and 1.8, the sharpness improves dramatically. And also you will thank yourself because the focusing becomes a lot easier. The rendering is beautiful. The 3D pop is amazing.
Okay, Becky, let's talk what it comes with. So it comes with front and rear caps. That's good, that's important. For the amount of money you pay, front and rear cup is quite essential. You know what? They also throw in a proper metal hood. And what I like about that is actually quite small and light compared to, let's say, those massive big petal shaped hoods that we normally get with those. So it is very nice. Um, cup is 82 millimeter. It is, and you can put the filter on. It has an actual filter rim inside the lens and then you can put the hood on on the outside so you're not stacking a filter and a hood together. It also comes with its own very heavy duty penny case style case. Normally a bodyguard carries it and his hand is handcuffed to the case. We did actually unbox the full box with the penny case when the lens first came out so you can check out that video on our YouTube channel. It's also got a proper little tripod foot here. It's attached to the lens with a collar, so you can't actually remove the tripod foot, but I have to say it is needed for this lens. That's true. I mean, you can do handheld, but it's a two kilograms in weight, so it is quite chunky and heavy. Okay, let's talk about all its screen and function buttons as well. Yeah, this lens sort of paved the way for that being incorporated into later lenses. Now we have this lovely OLED display here, which will give you the focus distance or the aperture, depending on what you want it to do. And you've also got the lens function button, which again, wasn't in earlier lenses around that time, but is now incorporated into all the later professional lenses. So it's a bit of a groundbreaker at the time. And as with all professional lenses, it comes with its own, that's uh, now we call function ring, and you can again assign your either aperture settings or some other settings to that ring. Obviously, this lens is not for everyone. Yes, 8,300 pounds is a lot of pounds, I can tell you that. But what we would recommend you, unless you're a collector, of course, or you can afford this one, what we would recommend you to at least experience it if you can. So if it's available for hire near you, then do hire it maybe for a weekend, or maybe on one of the expos, like photography show or somewhere else, etc., etc. The rendering is quite magical, so it's just worth mounting on your camera and take some shots with it. It's a pro concept lens, so it's worth giving it a go. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video useful, please give us a like, a subscribe, maybe even a super chat yeah, thingy. Sure, go there, click it. But also, if you want us to look at the rarest of the gems, do let us know in the comments below. I'm so distracted. And then the star of the show.